Hey guys, I really appreciate you being with me today. This is going to be a really um, uh, different kind of sermon. I'm kind of going back to a story kind of sermon, but this story is kind of, oh well, controversial in a way. Um, so I hope, but hopefully we'll learn uh, something about it, some something today, and hopefully he will he will teach us something through this fictional story that um, God gave me. Let's pray, Father. You know I'm scared today about this uh, story, but you gave it to me. This song has been in my heart and in my head forever, and Father. I thank you. I pray that your your spirit will be in in doubt on me like never before. Let let this story be the words that you would have me speak, oh God. Teach us about compassion. We don't have to agree to be agreeable, Lord God, and we can disagree without um, being disagreeable. And God, I, I pray that this story and this sermon will affect people in such a profound way that they'll never be the same. Holy Spirit, take control of my mouth. Take control of this story. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, this story is called Air on the Side of Compassion. It's going to be um, a, a, a story and a little bit of a sermon afterwards. Um, uh, I d so let's begin. Um, there... There is a pastor called Brian Carmichael. Brian and his wife only had one son um, because, because they wanted to have more children, but Denise Carmichael, his wife, couldn't get pregnant. So... They tried and tried and tried for years, and then they they got pregnant with um, their son. They called him. They called him Daniel. So Daniel um, grew up in the church. He he grew up going to school, he grew up hearing the word of God. Um, but when Daniel was about 13, um, he, he um, grew up kind of, he started to feel kind of differently. When other boys uh, would go, um, through puberty and talk about the girls um he didn't have the same reactions as other boys to girls and he figured well maybe not yet but one day he was in gym class and he so and he he was changing uh, clothes with another boy and he, 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 fe he felt something strange when he looked at that boy. He was like, oh, this is strange. Something strange went through his body and he thought, oh, what is this? And then as he got older, 
it got worse and worse, not worse and worse, but the feelings got more intense toward boys and um, toward boys instead of girls, and he, and at 16, his cousin invited him to a party, and um, at that party, he kissed the boy for the first time. And then, because he, he tried to kiss girls, and then nothing, there was no attraction there, no spark there. So, but when he kissed a boy at his cousin's party, it just started, something started to react in him, and then he couldn't deny it anymore. Um, that he, he... He, he was gay. And then what happened though, because he didn't, he loved his father. He knew what the words said and he was very conflicted. Um, this party happened when he was 16. So because he didn't want his father to find out because his father uh, went to a very conservative church. Um, he didn't want his father to find out uh, that he was actually uh, a homosexual. So he kind of um, ignored it and kept it under wraps. But it got to a point when he was 18 that he couldn't keep it under wraps anymore and um, he when his father was at a conference um, he kind of he, he snuck a boy into his house right thinking that his dad wouldn't find out um, and then when his dad came, his dad came home early because the church conference had wrapped up early. So his dad came home early. And um, so he found him making up with this, with this boy who was also who was by this time 18 and he was 18, he found, he, his dad came home and found him making it with his boy on the couch. And they, um, he chased the boy out like he was like, you dirty something something. And, um, and he's like, dad, what are you doing? And blah, blah, blah. So they had this big fight. Um, his father took him to, um, his father took out the Bible and took him to uh, Romans one eleven and and parts of Leviticus and saying, your behavior is sinful and no son of mine is going to hell. And if you can, and if you want to live this lifestyle, you you're going to have to get out of my house. You're going to have to get out of my house and never come back. I don't want to see you again. If you're going to live this immoral lifestyle, and and he's like, and he's like, you know what? Fine, I'm leaving. And he left. And when he left, left, he, from the moment he left his father's house, he, he immersed himself in gay culture, in the whole, um, 
the whole um, atmosphere in, in the LGBT community found friends who supported him and loved him and all of that. And, um, and about 10 years later, that little church that his father um, pastored grew into kind of a mega church. And he um, kind of, and his father, after, after the separation from his son, um, his father got so angry um, that he started this whole um, erase the homosexual agenda thing. So his father got so angry that it all his preaching became about erasing the homosexual agenda. He he did march did marches against um, gay marriage, and he was like. All of them should be burned, and he was. Ju it was hatred on his father's side, and the group of his friends. While the hatred on his father's side was going on, um, uh, the, uh, a group of his friends and him decided to launch a counterattack because what happened is is they him and his friends um including his partner and his other friends got so sick of uh the whole um kill the, the gay agenda thing that they started to launch a counterattack against Christians calling parts of the Bible hate speech. And and this was like, we strike and you strike. So they would bur they would have rallies blocking the entrance to a gay club. And then the other person would have rallies about blocking the entrance to a church for Sunday morning services. And it was es escalated and escalated and escalated until the whole city, the, the whole city was about, was about either your, 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 Either you're pro-gay or you're not, or pro-LGBT or you're not. Like, people, it got to the point where people at the grocery store wouldn't talk to each other. And people on one side of the issue just wouldn't talk to each other. Because th this whole thing was escalating. And... And there, there was one time where um, he, he was at like a, a, a LGBT march and one of the, one of the bishops from his father's church started um, shooting because you know how, how hate breeds hate. So one of the bishops of his father's church started shooting. And because this was um, a LGBT march, uh, people were, were killed. And, but one of the people that were injured was his son. And but he didn't know it was his son. Uh, the 
minister that was um, the head of the rally said, we got a lot of them. We got a lot of those dirty so-and-sos. And then he realized that on the stretcher was his son. And be, when he used to think of his son, he used to get really angry and and blame himself and turn the whole thing inward and on himself because he thought maybe he did something wrong and he turned that that anger at, at himself outward and started with this whole um kill the homosexual agenda thing and and then his son and his friends launched a counterattack, uh, which is like um, they call they called the counterattack the real rainbow uh, because we know in the Bible um, the rainbow was a symbol of God's promise, but for them the real rainbow is that everyone's included no matter what your sexual sexual preferences. So both sides launched their attack and it wasn't getting any better because both these the sides of this father and son, they were both harming each other. And then in the end, the son got shot. And so when he figured out his son, all his hatred and anger that he started at his church um, affected his son and got his son shot. Um, he really started to um, look at it differently. And um, he, he, for the first few days, he, he didn't go, he, um, the pastor had rallies planned and everything everything anti-LGBT and for the and then the other side had rallies planned but he didn't go to any of the rallies and all he could see is the little boy that he raised and the little boy that him and his wife prayed for and he was like Lord what do I do? And the, he was asleep one day and the Lord showed him a, a vision of the cross. And he was like, I, I he's like, I didn't agree or condone with everything that the world did, but I still loved them enough to take it on and die for them. And he said, the Lord said to him, that is still your son, whether you understand or condone what he does with his life, that is still your son. That is still the baby you raised. He's not any different. He's like, leave vengeance to me. Leave the heart to me and just love your son. And he says, you, you don't have to understand even or agree with 
what your son is doing, but you do have to involve your son and show him my love. And you could, you could tell him that you disagree, but remember, at the end of the day, you steal your son, and vengeance is, is mine. His sin is mine to forgive. And, and he woke up from that and just started to cry and cry and cry. And then he went to the hospital. His son lived, but he was in critical condition. And day after day, he held his son's hand. And as he held his son's hand, um, his son's partner um, came to the hospital. And as his son's partner came to the hospital, um, his son's partner and the pastor began to talk and just began to share their memories of his son and he realized that although he um, does not understand it or even agree with it, it this young man is just this, this young man could be another son. And instead of trying to change him from gay to straight, he just looked at this person as another son and just began to listen to this person's story. Um, and they talked. There would be sometimes where the doctors would need to, um, would need to, uh, would need to check would need, need to give their son, his son, a checkup. And, and so he would go down with the young man. And then at those cafeteria talks, they would talk and share their story. And wh when the when his son got stronger and got better, he saw that his father and his partner were actually uh, forming a, a relationship of, of common worry for him. So basically, after months and the son was released from the hospital. And after months and months of physiotherapy, and after months and months of healing, the son was able to walk again. And, and those months with his son, uh, were very healing between father and son because um, they were very healing. And no side really changed their mind about the issue, but they were able to uh, disagree respective, respectfully and they were able to um, find the love again that they lost and put down the anger. And after the son was, be was, uh, was better, the father decided 
to have his son and their friends um, have his son and his son's friends come to have just a discussion about both sides. So each side brought their points um, to the table and they were able to have a discourse and they didn't uh, change sides, but they were able to have a discourse and have understanding about each other's point of view, each other's community without hatred. It was all done in love and respect and understanding. And they didn't try and change each other's point of view. They did that. And that almost, it, when they did try and change each other's point of view with anger, um, it didn't work. It just got his son shot. And after months and months of recovery, they decided to just have a conversation not to change anybody's minds or anybody's thoughts or anybody's opinion, but just to hear each other's stories and on both sides. And that's what, and the community got better for it. Because oh, there's no greater experience than lived experience. And both the pastor and his son loved music. And there was a song from Lion King 2 when he was a little boy that they thought would be awesome to, to sing in this uh, little after the conversation. So after the discussion, they went and told their story about redemption, healing, about what, what they had gone through as father and son. And then after they told the story, they sang this song, Love Will Find A Way from Lion King 2. And then everybody was so blessed by it that it really shifted the uh, the air of this community from hatred to love and from anger to to forgiveness and peace and the like it was just a change from a hostile community which was either anti-LGBT or pro-LGBT and it was just a phenomenal change. And you didn't change uh, people's opinions and they didn't change your opinion. You just began to uh, agree to disagree and let love flow instead of hate and that changed their whole community. That brought understanding, that brought love, that brought peace and forgiveness. So I hope you enjoyed my story. I was so reluctant. I was very scared to tell this story because when the Lord gave it to me, I was like, "You do you really want me to, to do this? And he said, yes. And I said, you, you know, people are quick to cancel me when I get nasty comments. He said, I will be with you. You just speak the word and I will be with you. And like I said, 
well, I'm not taking a stance if I told this story. He said, Rachel, I don't need you to take a stance. I just need you to speak what I've told you to speak. And he said, yes, we need to speak the word um, in season and out of season, but we also need to err on the side of compassion. Um, what if that was your son and your and your daughter? What if that was you struggling with homosexual feelings or um, or the whole homosexual thing? How would you want to be treated? And he's saying, I don't want you to forgo my word, but you you have to deal with it in a, in a compassionate way. And he's like, compassion doesn't mean you say it's okay or whatever. But compassion means that even though I love means even though I don't agree with you, I can understand where you're coming from. And I can, and I can empathize with, with you. I can see your point of view and we can come to a mutual understanding of respect. And I think that's what the world needs. Sometimes the world doesn't need, although we need to take a stand for God's word, but sometimes compassion is the way to show people that, you know, God is not an ogre. He loves you. And love doesn't always mean agreeing. Love, for me, means embracing the person, even if you don't agree, recognizing that they're a person, and trying to understand their side, even if you don't agree, and trying to listen without being defensive. Um, it said, listen, like Mont Montel Williams used to say, speak without offending, listen without defending. And I think we, we don't listen to each other. And I think if we listen to each other, like the pastor and his son, we would come to, um, not only on the homosexual issue, but on other issues too, we would come to the space of understanding. We would come to the space of, of saying, I don't agree with you, but I can understand where you're coming from and put myself in your shoes. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this today. I totally enjoyed it, although I was kind of nervous um, to do this because this is a hot button issue and I didn't want people to think that I was um, pro-LGBT or anything like that, I'm saying we can we can coexist with each other if we have conversations and are honest with each other and because conversations breed understanding and i think without understanding we can't go anywhere
And I think we need to start talking. We need to start telling the truth. Um, we need to start socializing with communities we've never socialized with before. Christians need to start talking to Muslims. Muslims need to start talking to Jews. And we all just need to start talking. And Christians need to start talking to agnostics without trying to get them saved. We need to start building relationships with different kind of people. Remember I said uh, when his son was in the was in the hospital, his son's partner and him and the pastor would go down to the cafeteria and talk about the memories of the son and then they would open up about their lives. See, conversations can bridge, conversations will bridge gaps. And that's what we need. We need to start bridging gaps. We need to get our head out of the, st the sand and start talking about issues that are really affecting the world. And I'm gonna say, something controversial right now. Um, I was thinking about this the other day, and I was thinking, oh, I was thinking I love the word. I love how Jesus, um, I love the miracles. I love the word. But I'm beginning to look at the Bible more critically, not what Jesus did, but how he did it. I'm really not, I'm, I'm coming to the point now that I'm really not looking at what Jesus did and how to apply it. I'm looking at how Jesus did it. He took the issues of his day and framed it into stories so that people would understand it. He would frame little concepts into stories that they would have understood for the time so people can get the principles. So that's where the, um, that's where the parables come, came from because he was using things of his day to describe principles that were important to him. And that's where the, uh, where the parable of the sower comes in, where the prodigal son comes in, where uh, thousands of other stories, you, Jesus' ministry and how he did ministry. He did ministry um, for people, and he did ministry, he did great one-on-one -on -one ministry too, and he would tell these elaborate stories to illustrate a point. It was very rare that you saw Jesus in the synagogue. Uh, which was their place of worship. You wouldn't see Jesus in the synagogue. You would see him out socializing with people. And he met with people that other people didn't have anything to do with. And he, he dealt with the issues of the day in phenomenal ways. He dealt with sickness in phenomenal ways. He dealt with sexual promiscuity in phenomenal ways, and he built relationships. He was a master at building relationships, and I think that's what we need to do. We need to build relationships with different communities, communities that we may not agree with, communities that are different from us, not to just get them saved, but just to... Um, 
breed understanding and and in the future who knows understanding could breed salvation at least maybe forgiveness if not salvation um sometimes most times people get saved through a relationship with somebody else someone invited them to church or someone ministered to them but relationship is the way we start we started and jesus was very innovative in the way he did things he never healed someone the same way twice one time he would just tell somebody to dip in the jordan and another time he put some spit mixed with mud on somebody's eyes he was very innovative and i think it's time for the church to be innovative and to to really um realize that the gospel is the same but the way we bring about it is different the way we we uh teach it is different i think we're stuck in a way that we think we have to teach we have to have uh two worship songs uh two fast songs two slow songs and then uh 20 to 45 minute sermon where god is so much bigger than our walls god is so much bigger than what we think so it's time for us to start asking lord what do you, how do you want us to do ministry because i honestly think there's a whole world of ways to do ministry that we're not even tapping into yet and the lord is calling the church so desperately for innovative uhness and to reach this generation for him father thank you today for your for your insight thank you today for your just love and your grace towards us thank you i was singing love will find a way all week i was um playing the movie version from the lion king 2 and i was playing um the the radio version uh the studio version by um by Heather 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 Headley and I forget the gentleman's name now but that when this story started to come to me in this whole uh sermon thing started to come to me and and it's just so phenomenal and i'll tell you i was very scared um to really ha have this sermon that the lord uh wanted me to wanted me to do it so i had to do it um and as i go out as i end this thing today i'm going to sing a bit of that for you and then i will post it on on my uh Rachel on my wall on my wall and Rachel's rhythm as I will post it in both places so you won't get to hear the actual version by Heather Headley and Kenny Ladmore that's that that
that's the um, that's the gentleman's name. I think it's Kenny Lattimore. Anyway, I know that the last name is, is Lattimore. I think the first name is Kenny. I'm not sure about that. But anyway, I'll see you. I'll see you next week. Bye. Hope you enjoyed the story and hope hope that it inspired you and enlightened you that you don't have to agree with someone but you, you can have a conversation with them and understand them and understanding can be can read peace and just make it a better world like it did for this community that tried hate and vitriol on both sides. But it's not until they loved, it's not until this father and son forgave each other and had a conversation at the church that the community started to come alive and, and feel like one again with nobody fighting, with nobody trying to change each other's minds or whatever. Only God can change a heart and a mind. And all we can do is try, try to empathize and see the other person's side. And when you see the other person's side, when understanding comes to you, it can break chains. Understanding breaks chains, and that's what the Lord wa wa wants to say to you today. Understanding breaks chains and brings change. Okay, guys, I'll see you later. Bye. In a perfect world, one we've never known, we would never need to face the world alone. Of their world, we'll create our own. I may not be brave. They were strong or smart, but somewhere in my secret heart, I know the way anywhere I go. Cause you are there beside me, I don't. so afraid now I realize love is never wrong so it never dies uh, there's a perfect world running in your own and if only they can feel it too, the happiness I feel with you, they'd know. Love will find a way anywhere I go. I'm hard. Are they together? Today, 
somehow will come through. Okay, guys, see you next week. Bye.